What is going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday Night Live Stream. We got KA Reefing, G Day, Lisa's, Darren's Marine World. What is going on, guys? Mass Aquariums, Lisa's Aquatics, Nasty Nemo, Gal Gal. Sure, Buckles Reef, I Reef. What's going on, everybody in the chat? Hopefully, everyone's having a wonderful Wednesday. I'm hoping it's not too much background noise or carpet cleaning upstairs. So I'm hoping the mic's not picking up too much of it. I Reef, what's going on? So, today, as most of you know, I have done a big swap switcheroo and moved my tank around. And because of that, I've had a lot of people asking me questions around tank moves. And the last few months, I also helped another buddy. He moved to a new house, so I helped him move his whole tank. Uh, another buddy just bought a new tank, so I helped him move his. Uh, Mirrors Reef, what's going on, buddy? So I've done a lot of tank moves recently. Uh, I have another buddy that upgraded a tank. So there's been lots of this whole tank switcheroo musical tank chairs the last couple months for me. What's going on, Sandy's Reef? So I've had many, a bunch of different kind of questions on it. Braveheart, welcome. On how to move it. Um, even on one of my little Red Sea nanos, I'm working on something. I just like slide the tank away from the wall and people are like, how the heck did you move that? A uh, couple quick tips on that if you are doing do, 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 do. if you have harder floors like uh, like a laminate hardwoods tile anything like that you put those felt little sliders on the bottom of your tank and that makes a huge difference so I mean pro tip number one always put those on the bottom if you have those little rubber feet it's gonna make it more friction and it's not gonna move which is not necessarily your friend what's going on Cruz Sandy Lisa Starbuckles Savecki's Reef welcome guys um, if you have your tank on carpet, I would always put on those, doo -doo -doo, like the, they see on the bottom of the couch, like little casters, not casters, like little plastic things. They help slide across the carpet. And that's another big thing. So putting, you got to plan a little bit ahead. I mean, you can try and slide them in afterwards, but it's a lot more work. But having them on from the beginning is going to make your life easier to shift stuff around. So one of my biggest hurdles recently was figuring out how to put a new tank in the exact same spot as the old tank. Now, when I was originally doing this, I put um, carpet tiles underneath the bottom of the tank. So I had some old, super, super dense carpet, and I had them underneath the stand so I could literally slide. It was still freaking heavy, but it allowed me to move it. Now, in the new tank, I got a bunch of those little felt pads you can buy for, like, under the bottom of chairs and stuff. I buy big pads of them, and I cut them into strips. And I put them on all the corners of the stand, as well as some in the middle. Uh, sound seems kind of low here. I can boost up a bit. Hopefully that's a bit better. I was trying not to put it too high so it's not picking up the vacuum thing in the background. So let me know that's sounding. What's going on, Mr. Ben? How are you? Can't hear you if you're on there, Ben. Maybe muted. And... Looks like we got Ben and Terrence. Maybe, maybe. Hey, Ben. <laughs> um, all right. So, so far, uh, biggest thing, be planning ahead and having something where you can actually move it. I'm just going to show you guys one quick little time lapse I did when we were doing mine with this big swisheroo. We literally had a drain the whole tank down, probably about 70% of the water out of it. Um, just enough to leave the fish room so they could actually swim around with the side of it and then it was freaking heavy But we were actually able to move the tank Which really went a long way to be able to do this and I can kind of jangle the new tank into place to pump the old water back into the tank That allowed me to let the fish everything go. None of my rock moved. Everything was fairly smooth That went quite a long ways Oh, Cruz! $50 super chat. Holy smokes, buddy. Much appreciated. That is a new record. Thank you, Cruz. Yeah, so that's kind of a quick little time lapse. Cruz, thank you so much. That is awesome, man. Much, much appreciated. Uh, Will's Reef, Saltwater, Newbie. Cruz, you're a superstar. Thank you so much. Now, when you... Holes drilled, excellent. So when you're moving a tank, if you're moving it in the same house, not an issue. If you're moving it to a new location, like a new house, one thing you want to consider is, is it worth upgrading your tank at that point? 
Uh, one big thing to consider is a lot of people say not to reuse sand. There is a lot of garbage that builds up in your sand. And if you're moving rock and moving all that stuff out of the tank to move it to a new location, you're stirring up a lot of that stuff. And there's a lot of nasty, nasty stuff that happens in the water. What's going on, Richard? Welcome, Mr. Reefs. And a lot of nasty, nasty stuff that comes in the water. So I cannot believe how nasty my sand was as I was sucking out and cleaning all the old stuff. So that's pretty crazy, something to consider. Um, you can 100% reuse your sand, but if you do, you, you're going to have to clean it very, very well. Uh, the way to clean it is I take all my sand out and suck it out just with a big one inch siphon hose, suck it into buffets, and then take it outside, put the garden hose in it, and just keep rinsing and rinsing and rinsing. Disturb it, shake it all up, and it'll keep rinsing until the water runs clear. Now, eventually, it will run clear, but the thing is, with doing this, you're going to kill all your good bacteria. So, you're going to have to resupplement that to an extent. So, um, in my case, I use Fritz Triple Start, and I use copious amounts of this stuff. So, put, dump this back into the tank, let it run, tested everything, everything checked out good, no ammonia, no nitrate, no nitrites. Same thing, that night dumped in some more, next morning dumped in some more, retested it all, everything was good out of my fish. Now, on my move, I used a mix of dead rock and live rock, and that definitely helped, because um, I still had a lot of that live good bacteria in it, but I did use 100% new sand with it. I can still hear that vacuum in the background. Turn down a little bit, hope that's okay. Um, so yeah, live beneficial bacteria goes a long ways, and that is the main kind of filter in your tank, in your system. Uh, do you have any tanks on drilling holes on an active reef if one third filled? You can 100% do it. You generally, you do want it to be wet when you drill it. You don't want any of those glass fibers into the tank. I've seen people do it with like putty around the edge of it and kind of drill it and just spray it with water. It is a bit messy, but it works. Um, same thing on the inside, just have something to catch any of those little dust glass particles so not getting all through your tank. Um, ideally, you want to have your tank sideways so you can drill straight down, but I have 100% seen it done straight through the side thing, so it is definitely doable. What's going on, Devin? Hey, Terrence, how are you? Doing good, man. Doing good. Excellent, excellent. Have you had any, any fun of moving reef tanks in the last year or so? Um, no, I haven't, not in the last year or so, but I did, uh, break down a tank to, um, break it down and, and get rid of it uh, and move to a new location, but didn't, uh, bring that much stuff with me. But definitely the sand thing that you just spoke about is absolute. I mean, it is unreal how much gunk is in the tank that's just locked up in there that you don't even know is there. Yeah, just even like moving rocks and stuff, not a big deal. But when I got down to that last third of water and really started you know, trying to find all my snails and starfish and everything. It was nasty how dark it was. It just goes to show how much junk actually builds up in your sand over time. So I wholeheartedly agree with people that say you use new sand whenever you move a tank. And you can clean it and reuse it, but I mean, it's a lot of effort. I mean, whether or not it's worth it, it's up to you, but you are going to kill your bacteria. You are starting fresh after that point. Yeah, there's definitely, you're either going to choose the bacteria or you're going to choose dirt. I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, or it's going to, you're going to have, no bacteria and clean sand, or mm -hmm. very little, and, or you're going to have to have some level of, of grossness. Yep, exactly. So you, if you do reuse your sand, you if you're in the back so easily though, anyways, it's no big deal. Just clean the heck out of it and use it again. If you want the effort, if you don't want to have the effort, <laughs> then just buy new. And you know, it's just it's really how much is your time worth? That's pretty much what it comes down to, in my opinion. Yeah, a hundred, hundred percent agree with you on that one. Sorry, I keep playing with my mic levels, trying to drown out the carpet cleaner guys in the background. Um, I thought that was some kind of weird uh, reverb or something that was happening. Yeah, that's some. Um, they're cleaning the carps upstairs, and there's a nice big van in the wall behind me. So bad day for live stream, but what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> my my day yesterday was bad with uh, two or three drops on the live stream, so I wasn't so happy with that. <laughs> I was wondering about that. I was watching the video. It was like five minutes. I'm like, can't be that short. Uh, Each one of them happened. It's six minute intervals, and I huh. can't figure it out whether or not it's a streaming software yet or or what it looks like uh, data rate looked pretty good and i don't know if something came online here we had everything all turned down and priority for everything so i don't know what the deal was but anyway i re i basically patched it all together and rebroadcast it out and tried the new or at least new to me the the premiere thing on facebook have you tried that i uh, know i haven't yet it's pretty cool it's so like when you come out with a new video you put it on its premiere oh very cool and, it, and it, it's like a live production where you can chat with people mm -hmm. live 
um, while that it's playing for the first time and you can't, you know, rewind or any of that stuff or path forward. So it's kind of neat. Hmm. I'll have to try that. I've never, I've always focused on YouTube. I've never fully tried YouTube. I should one of these days. Yeah. And when you live stream, like I told you, I use, I, I push out the both. So mm -hmm. you try that. Uh, quick question in the chat for you, Terrence. Uh, my AF, probably auto feeder, won't retract all the way after feeding the tank. Apex Classic took it out, made sure it wasn't blocked. Any suggestions? Uh, yeah, nothing that I know of that you can try. Um, off the top of my head, uh, you know, maybe just a, a warranty issue kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, because it might be the gear uh, skipped or stripped or something like that on the inside. It's possible. Okay. Nope. Good to know. Yeah, contact support. Easy one. If it's, out of, if it's out of warranty, you got nothing to worry about. You can disassemble the whole thing and learn how the auto feeder works, I guess. Yep. And yeah, Mirrors Reef, shoot me a message too. I wonder if you need a hand with that if it's out of warranty. Uh, so another buddy I helped. Another one actually this year I've had I think three people I've helped move a tank within a house and I've also had another buddy he bought a new house so I helped him move his tank that was a lot of work by the way uh, copious amounts of five gallon buckets to get all your water all your fish pretty much everything you can um, he reused his sand on his tank we didn't get stirred up too much but all the rock everything same thing took it out put it in buckets I know more people have more concern across towns not a big deal However, if it's in the middle of winter or, you know, down Texas in the middle of summer where it's nice and toasty and cooking outside, I mean, you, got, you might have to worry about temperature control if you're going a long distance. That uh, might be one of the case. Uh, one buddy actually. You absolutely will, especially yep. if you're talking about on the warm side because you've got an oxygen issue to worry about too. You know, that's a lot different. The battery-powered air pumps can go a long way. So I should get sure. a couple of those in your little five gallon buckets. That can definitely help. Um, heat or cooling packs, again, depending on the time of year and where you're going. I had uh, one semi-local guy and he went to Calgary, Alberta, which is a good like eight hours or whatever it was, a decent drive for him. And he actually had a deep freeze that he put all his fish into. We basically turned to a small aquarium and he used that to transfer all his livestock and coral. And it worked pretty well for him, actually. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, I never would have thought about that. But yeah, big deep freeze and or coolers are even a good one I've seen people use. Yeah, yeah, I've used coolers before. Mm -hmm. no, I mean, I've, I've, you know, I've helped move and I moved one of my original tanks. And I mean, moving, moving for me is bringing in the giant tank into my house. Now, that was an experience. Ah, uh, yes. That's, they... that's something I don't want to repeat. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if he's on right now. Uh, one buddy, Derek, I posted a couple pictures on Instagram a while ago, but I helped him move his tank, which was bigger than mine. It was thinner glass, at least, but it's still freaking heavy, trying to maneuver that in and get through doorways. If you're building a custom tank, consider the doorway span. You know, most houses are a minimum of, you know, that 30-inch door frame, or, but make sure you're, if you're going really long, you can actually get it in and around corners. All these things got to take account of ahead of time. And glass is not... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't do that. No, um, very well. I don't think many people do. I mean, my tank is only 30 inches wide. I have a, um, I don't know, it's a 36 or a 40 inch wide front door. But, you know, I've got about eight steps coming up uh, to the stoop before my door. Maybe six. And then, um, but the problem is, is that when you have a 950 pound tank, you need a lot of people around that tank. Yes. And, um, so that means they've got to have a room to get by as they're going up the narrow stairs too. Mm -hmm. And then you have to run people around to go on the other side of the door to catch it as it's coming through the other side of the door. And you yep. have to have like this, you know, fire drill <laughs> around the other side. Yep. And yep. then when you get it inside, there's the stand and you're like, I'm already tired. And uh, why did you decide to have a 42 inch high stand? Because now you... <laughs> You basically have to do the kind of like the clean and jerk to with nine people to get it up onto the stand, 950 pound tank. So, and doorways are something people don't consider. I mean, usually there's only one person that's fitting through that doorway at a time on each end of the stand, right? And that's right. The, one of the trickier, harder parts. And all the moves I've done was trying to get through the door with a 400 pound, 500 pound chunk of glass. Yep. Yep. There's no doubt. And, you know, that thing just slips a little bit and touches the ground. It's over. Yep. Bad things happen. 
There we go. Sorry, I'm still tweaking with the audio. I can still hear the vacuum through the headphones. <laughs> the most, the really the most important part on on tanks is get help, get more assistance than you think you need, mm -hmm. and then get more. And then, um, especially you know, on anything that's you know over 100 gallons, and um, and then for anything that's about 150 and up, for sure, get the suction cups. Yeah. There's um, another one thing to consider even if you are moving it within a house or somewhere new you're going to have a somewhat of a mini cycle once you put everything back into the tank oh yeah you're disturbing all of that you know cycle your sand whatever your rock all that stuff's being disturbed it's wet it's dry stuff's moving around so there's going to be a cycle so if you are putting your fish in right away make sure you have something to deal with that ammonia or reestablish that bacteria culture and help boost it back up in the tank uh, when I first cycled my tank, originally I used Dr. Tim's the first time. Um, this time I dumped in a ton of Fritz Turbo Start, and I had zero cycle. Like, I tested at night, I tested again in the morning, just to make sure that there was no, no cycle or anything, per just because I wanted to get everything moved over within a day or so. So I added all my I added my rock into it, then I added well, water first, then rock, then sand, which created a dust storm, of course. But I wanted to get everything in there first, make sure all the rock was on the base, and then I dumped in bacteria after that point. But even if I was going to move it, make sure you do have something that will deal with that bacteria or that ammonia or anything that may come up in your tank. And make sure you, that's no one ever tests that stuff. But it's worth testing once you move a tank or you relocate it and that type of stuff to get it going again. Because there will for sure be a, somewhat of a mini cycle in your tank. Uh, my experience, the worst part is going upstairs. I would agree on that one. <laughs> Um, yeah, sand is cheap, not not worth trying to reuse it. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. And if you do, I mean, put new sand in. You could take your old sand and just wash it later and use it for a future tank, future project. I have another local reefer that's coming to grab my sand for one of his tanks. So definitely reusing it is totally doable, but it's got to put a little bit of little elbow grease and a whole lot of hose time to get it cleaned up again. Uh, what else some other common ones I had? Um, but yeah, if you are moving, you are to go bigger tank. That is like the prime time to upgrade your tank. If you could have a new tank, if you're moving to a new house, I mean, great excuse. Have a new one already set up and rolling at the new location. If you know it's going to be a while too, same thing. If you pre-mix some salt water and you have some bins at your new place with some heaters and power heads, whatever, just waiting for you. Once you move your stuff in, you can put them in your temporary tank. Your temporary tank, which could be some giant Rubbermaid bins, whatever it is and kind of tie, tie it over so you're not rushing and scrambling to get your rock and your new tank going right away. So that one can go a long ways as well. Luckily with mine when I moved it, I was able to just drain out water, slide it, move it back over, re-add the water. So that wasn't bad. But uh, my original plan was actually to put everything in Rubbermaid bins and all kinds of bins all around the perimeter of the room. That way I could do my big switcheroo in the middle room and have a lot of space to work. But yeah, if I was going to new location, same thing. Those big bins set up, ready to roll, got your water, heaters, power heads in it. Then you're not in a rush, right? So the biggest thing is not to freak out or stress out over stuff. Is make your life easy. Just ordered KFC Special Grade. Do you think it live is better than dry? Honestly, I don't think there's a huge difference. Live is generally less dusty. There is some live bacteria, but you're not getting tons and tons of it. I went with the dry just because it's cheaper. I think I used 80 pounds in my new tank. In nano tanks, I'd probably buy live. In a bigger tank, I'd probably go dry. I um, I always like to rinse the sand first too, well, if it's dry, just to get all those dust and particles out. It'll help your tank clear faster. So a couple little things to consider on that front. It's weird. I've got multiple cameras on this computer and the virtual one i can't get unstuck on there inside chrome <laughs> I don't know why yep internet grimness so have, today like a virtual camera i guess and it doesn't want to i don't know how to set it in chrome <laughs> fair enough it could be something else is using it usually if something doesn't come up there could be another broadcasting oh, yeah usually something will lock it and you can only use it one program at a time that's usually, right. usually what my issues are or some plug and plug it back in, and then it works just reboot it <laughs> I do apologize today for the carpet cleaning, which I did not know was happening. I found it. Okay. Uh, another 
not necessarily there. Uh, if moving to, uh, put tops on your containers. As of last night, uh, laying in bed last night and I heard a splash. I'm like, what the heck come out? My trigger fish jumped out and was behind my stand. So luckily I heard that oh, he did it while I was awake. So I could save him, put him back in the tank. And today on my lunch break, I built a mesh top for my tank. So if you same thing, if you're moving locations and you have all your stuff in five gallon buckets or rubber maids, make sure you put a lid on it. So your fish don't go for a leap to the, find the bigger ocean up on a carpet or ground somewhere. Uh, Nasty Nemo, always have more water ready than you need. 100% agree with you on that one. Basically, everyone I've always talked to always seems to be, hey, 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 always Nothing else I figured out how to do this. Yep. So pretty much everyone I've always talked to always runs out of water and is panicking to make more. So yes, the great tip of always have more water than you actually need. <laughs> um... If you suck all the sand with the live rock and refugium, I do not think you'll go into a mini cycle. If you stuck all the sand with the live rock, it's more the fact that you'd be disturbing the sand bed. If you're moving across the room, you're probably fine. If you're sliding it around, but if you're taking all that rock out and putting rock or new sand back in, I don't know if I took a picture or videoed it, but it was nasty how black my water became once I started stirring up that last few inches of sand. And all that stuff is just going to be causing like ammonia and nitrates, like all that kind of stuff is just going to seep back out. It's, it's nasty. Like that's the bad thing, right? It's stirring that all up. But yeah, so always, always, always have lots of extra water ready. hundred percent with you on that one. I had a just big 50 gallon brute can, same thing. I had that all pre-mixed and had that one ready to roll before moved it, actually filled it up multiple times. And at the end still had that just kind of left over. Just because I add more to the sump and keep adding more and more and more. Uh, Groovan, what's going on? Local LFS, don't forget to smash that like button. Appreciate it, Lisa. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. Uh, might have had a handful of questions. I think I covered most of the stuff that I've been asked in the last week or so. So if you guys have any questions on it, let me know. It's probably going to be a short one today just because that vacuuming is really loud and I feel bad in the background right now. Um, how long could beneficial bacteria stay alive out of water? So as long as your rock is wet, you're still going to have bacteria. If you, if it's a bottle of bacteria, like Dr. Tim's or Fritz or one of those, those ones generally need to be refrigerated. Uh, this is just a guess on this part, but I'm assuming it slows down their metabolism and their cycle, like everything else. So those ones you can be refrigerated. If it's rock or sand, basically, as long as it's wet, you'll still have bacteria. Like you might get a bit of die off but keep it damp. Like if your rocks out, make sure you splash every once in a while, keep it moist. I uh, also think the tank size matters. If it's small, the tank may go through a mini cycle. If it's larger, you can probably get away with it. Could be, could be. I think it goes how much there is to mess it up. Uh, was Ben here to talk about the calcium reactor? I'm not sure, but that's actually on my to-do list is sitting on my counter and probably gonna be set up tonight, tonight or tomorrow. Uh, you can run lots of ammonia re removal pads, water changes, and add bacteria. Yep, definitely can. Uh, I probably used about 30%. Th oh, sorry. Yep. No Did problem. you see the calcium reactor I just threw a picture of? The pretty orange and gray one? Or different one? Yeah, the monster. Yeah, that was a beast. The monster beast from, from Geo's Reef. Yeah, that I had redone. Uh, yeah. I put a core pump on it. Yeah, I can't wait to get that guy going. Color scheme look good? <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, oh yeah, and it's, it holds 50 pounds of media. <laughs> nice. That's a good chunk. I don't actually know how much mine is going to be yet, but I have bags. It's all on my counter lined up. I keep thinking about doing it, just haven't had a chance yet. So hopefully, Sweet. hopefully tonight's. Well, I that's a nice, that's a nice reactor for sure that you got there. No doubt. Oh. Nice, nice job. Very nice. Uh, their stuff, they put, to, they put together some good uh, acrylic pieces for sure. Yeah, no, it's it definitely looks pretty awesome. Excited to get it going. I got the peristolic pump to the... What happened to that? He was on here. What he was on. Him? I'm not sure. He saw me and then bugged out. Might be in the chat. He had no audio, so I'm not sure if something was not working for him or not. Or no Perfect. microphone. The video was working. Yep. Um, how hmm. much old water did I use? I used probably about, I'm going to say 30% maybe. I filled up the new tank just the display with brand new salt water. And I had the old tank beside it. And I used a little DC pump to pump water from one tank to the next. 
I'm going to guess I did probably 15 gallons at a time. And I did that three or four times. So I tried to mix some water between the two tanks just to kind of level out all the parameters between the two. So I did this probably about three times in the night again in the morning. And I did a bunch of that before I moved it over. So I'm going to, I'm just roughly guessing probably about 30%. And that kind of leveled the water between the tanks, which helped ease any type of shock for any of the fish or corals. It leveled the parameters and whatnot. So I think that probably helped a bit just when I actually did move it. Uh, made my tank water levels match. Yep, similar thing. So the corals just thought it was a large water change. Exactly, right? So it's just like probably a 50% water change or 70% in my case. Good evening, Wayne. Is Neptune going to have a holiday sale? I don't know. Are they, Terrence? <laughs> If I knew, I wouldn't tell you. Nobody knows. Uh, Black Friday, having hot chocolate sounds tasty. Devin and Terrence having problems connecting for some reason. Ah, that's no fun, Ben. I'll send you that link one more time if you do want to give it one more whirl. Hey, uh, Ben, just make sure that you and the gear in the upper right corner, you can select which microphone and which uh, camera. So it's right, there's a little person icon with a plus, and then there's the gear, and then there's the three dot icon in the Google Hangouts thing. There, I just sent you the link again one more time. Do you want to try it one more time? Uh, weakness right now is French vanilla cappuccino. Sounds delicious. <laughs> What's going on, Reflico? Yeah, sometimes Hangouts works really smoothly, and other times it's just a huge pain. Sadly, it's one of those things. Should try. I mean, at least from my side, it's always worked really well to yeah. connect into your stuff. I don't know how it it does as far as broadcasting and stuff, but as far as connecting into you, for me, it's always seemed to work. I just had to okay. figure out because it had the wrong camera selected right now. Mm -hmm. The default camera, and I was looking for it in Google, and what I needed to do was look for it in that little gear menu inside Google Hangouts screen. Okay, gotcha. Oh, that's a good tip. I've had some times where I go to join other people's streams and it will just give me some error and not actually join. So I don't know if that's semi-related, but that was a spritz for a while. It seems to be a little better now. Uh, I'll give Ben one more minute to see if he hops on. Um, any other questions, guys? Let me know. One other, one little insight tip thing I can I can give you that uh, will be coming out soon is mm -hmm. uh, calibration packs will be sold in three. Mm -hmm. So that's a little insider info. So that you'll get a little price break. They'll come with the seven, the ten uh, for pH, and then the fifty-three thousand for the conductivity all in one pack at a really good price. So oh, that'll you'll be start handy. seeing those during the holiday week for sure. Excellent. And maybe, maybe even at a little bit better price than they will be normally after that. So it'll be the time to get your probes calibrated. So at and least you tell everybody, you know, when the time changes, you know, change your batteries and your thing. And for sure, if you haven't done it already, calibrate your probes. That's actually time change is a not bad way to do it. That's what they tell you for your smoke detectors. Nice. So question for you. Uh, I saw on your stream the other day, you're talking about the salinity pens. How do you like them so far? What are your thoughts on them? So I think, um, well, I think that the salinity pin without the cup uh, can give you a decent number. Mm -hmm. I think um, if you watched my stream yesterday, I think anybody who's chasing numbers to try to get things match up between different things, it's kind of a fool's folly mm -hmm. um, because many of these things, the precision that they have anyway is much greater than what people are looking to try to match up. So mm -hmm. they're trying to match up, you know, from... A salinity pen like you're yeah. talking about to let's say the apex well the apex maybe it's plus or minus i don't know a quarter or a half ppt right mm -hmm. and the pen is probably plus or minus one to one and a half ppt mm -hmm. right and so to get things to match is going to be really really difficult yeah. um, for a myriad of reasons as far as the pen itself the little if you, if you measure with the little cup thing that's generally not a great idea i've never actually um, bothered with the cup i just poke it in the tank or mixing bin or whatever mm -hmm. The one thing I can say is it's likely that the materials used in the, uh, you know, the part that conducts electricity, if you see the little bands on there, the little yep. metallic bands, um, 
that material is probably not a really expensive material, which means mm -hmm. it probably is going to corrode. And that's what I suspected. And I did see the one that Richard Ross had yesterday and you could see the plating was already starting to come off. What brand was uh, it? Uh, what should I say? I, I have two in front of me. I'm curious as what's, I think one of them looked familiar. Yeah, well, it was the ice cap one that I oh, happened to be cap. on. But okay. I don't know it's going to be any different because uh, my belief is they're probably all from the same OEM with just slight yep. changes um, this, for one to the other. This, and some of them I, there's, there's temp compensation and some yep. doesn't, um, which, I mean, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, you know, I think as anything, it's, you know, you calibrate it, it's going to get you in the neighborhood and yep. the neighborhood is all you're really caring about. And then looking at, what yeah it's the the one the blue one there the blue and white one okay um, yeah so th okay so ice cap is the other version of this so my semi insider type of information is this is basically yes they are more or less made in the same factory this yeah, one this one's is a basically, higher quality one the yeah. other one that you have there is the higher quality version so this, of it this one, one of the, is like the gen two like where that. the ice cap is the gen one that was the one kind of thing because you can't That's calibrate the ice cap true. what's up that's not necessarily true to Gen 1. Gen. It's just different. Yeah. They're just different. And okay. yeah, there's the one. And th that you'll find that. I think somebody told me it was for telling like salinity and ramen or something. I don't know. <laughs> yep. And <laughs> I don't know how true that is, but I thought mm. it was kind of a funny story if it is. Nice. Um, and uh, it was repurposed. And I don't know. Again, don't quote me. I didn't. I don't know that for a fact. Mm. Um, and then uh, the other one looks like more like one of the scientific ones. Yeah. That one um again i don't have any real experience but the just to know like for instance the the conductivity probe which is what these are measuring is conductivity mm -hmm. on, on the apex you know the reason it's so expensive is because it's a quality one that has platinum mm -hmm. and the band are made out of platinum and you know that's kind of super important yeah so it goes a long way but but overall that the kind of the message rich ross and i were trying to get across yesterday is you have all these different methods, um, the hope that they're all going to line up, you know, over time and over temperature and over um, the precision of each and every one of the devices. It, it's more important that you go, OK, I'm going to, you know, use this salinity pen. I'll, OK, great. I'll keep it clean and I'll try to keep it from getting corroded or whatever. And I know that it's at least consistent, but consistently wrong too, and that's fine. Or it's consistently <laughs> going to be one PPT off, and I'm good with that because I keep my tank at 34. And so if it's really 35 or you know 33, it, when it's telling me 34, that's going to be okay. So precision versus accuracy, as long as it's yeah. consistent at least, right? Yeah. I mean, what you're looking for in these things anyway, especially when you're talking about something that's in situ, which is you know in the water in the tank permanently, mm -hmm. like the apex probe, is what you're looking for is you know trends anyway mm -hmm. you look at the trends one direction or another and in the in the live stream and let's talk reef yesterday um there's an example that happened to me yesterday where i did have i was messing around in my tank and i stuck it, the connectivity probe in a different spot and lo and behold in that spot it it got an air bubble in it in the morning mm -hmm. um and uh, it was just uh, fortuitous that it happened the day i was gonna have the let's talk reef live stream Mm -hmm. um, and when I talk with Rich, it's like, yeah, okay. So Terrence, how did you know that's not real? It's like, well, my, you know, my salinity dropped, you know, four <clears throat> PPT in the matter of, you know, 10 minutes and I have 600 gallons of water. You know how much water it would take to basically tons take down four PPT in 600 gallons of water. It'd be flooding. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, it took quite a bit. And all I did was then click over to my temperature and see that my temperature didn't drop at all. Mm -hmm. and, so, hmm, this is probably an anomaly. Yep. You know, on the other hand, if I drop four PPT over the course of three hours and I see some, you know, a small drop in my temperature as it's going, you know, it's happening, I go, hmm, looks like I might have an ATO issue. Mm -hmm. um, something's going on there. So this is what it is to look at data. And one of the, the goals that I have, at least for like the next uh, six months or so, is to help educate people on looking at data and what it really means that you know just because something is digital doesn't mean that it's perfect and accurate and everything else and it also doesn't mean that you can even get it there um you know long term so you have to you have to understand what the limits are of things i mean you probably know this because you're a uh, a tech guy that you can go take excel and have you know a chain of very simple operations on a number and it doesn't come out to the number mm -hmm. um, because computers are 
are not uh you know exact and, and infinitely precise right when it, well one of the big things i think it's more paying attention to the trends and the actual value right absolutely 100 percent. like look at orp for instance i don't really care what the value is i just care if it's going up or down right well yeah and, or and again spike in one direction then maybe something. yeah and again we're talking you know people look at you know their ph or what have you and mm -hmm. they're you know they're trying to work really hard to show that the ph probe the way that it's being used for them after <laughs> doing all this stuff and everything else well gee it's off by 0 0.03 you know it's not perfect this is not going to work for me no that's that's not how to use that tool anyway mm -hmm. It's great. Calibrate it. Get it, you know, reasonable within say 0 0.03 on either side when it calibrates. And if it drifts a little bit in a week or two, it's okay. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's just it, it it's just these are tools for you to have a better understanding of your aquarium. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to quick get to this question because it's starting to scroll off the screen. Uh, K and H reefing question. I overdosed snowpox. Had a big bacteria bloom. For five days, did a big water change, and it's cleared up. Mostly, my corals are still mad and mostly closed. I read UV sterilizer will help. Um, I wouldn't implement UV just for that. If you you overdose any carbon source, you're getting a bacteria bloom because you basically just said, "Here's the buffet, have at her." So it's a ton of extra bacteria in your tank. I would honestly just stop dosing it for a while. It'll drop down and kind of level on its own. Water changes, yes, if you want to suck out some of that white filmy stuff that's probably growing on your rocks. But UV, I don't think it would do much. To be honest, that scenario. Um, someone else was asking two MP40s or gyres both work. I had a gyre and two MP40s in my tank, but I also only had flow on one wall, so I was just trying to struggle to get flow that six feet and wrap it around, just different types of flow. Um, so they both can work. Uh, anywhere that sells ProClear on the west coast of Canada. I don't know what Pro ProClear is. I'm not sure on that one. Somebody had another Apex question if we're going to redesign the salinity probe. And it, it, no, it's not. Again, this is a, this is this goes to the same question. Is that, yeah, you can, you, you'll be able to calibrate it. And if you utilize it the right way and you don't have interference, you put it, you know, a uh, whole side up, let the bubbles come out. If there are any bubbles, put it in an area where you're not going to get as many bubbles or it's going to be in a, a higher flow area where there aren't bubbles um it's it's going to work it's going to be consistent we have a number of aquarists here in the office and they all run consistently because they, they follow these best practices um basically what i've learned is one don't put some more air bubbles in it and two don't put it beside a higher voltage item that's going to potentially interfere with it absolutely those are those are definitely two things don't don't run the wires like perfect down the line with um you know high voltage uh, mm -hmm. stuff especially high voltage dc stuff um and that's going to help you out a lot yep. uh, and yes you're going to look at trends and when you calibrate it should come back at 35 you know when you calibrate make sure you float the solutions make sure that you turn on uh you know make sure that you have the temperature ca uh, compensation on you know all of these things and some of these things are in uh videos for myself or Devin and others as well already um and uh, we'll be doing more on this we'll be doing a whole kind of segment i think on let's talk reef here sometime in the future where we'll do the whole thing on you know we'll do half an hour probably on just the salinity probe mm -hmm. and best practices and and all of this um, I, 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 again I have we have people who are looking at uh you know 33 ppt on their tank and they're like there's no way my tank could be working well at 33 ppt mm -hmm. and my refractometer says 35. So the apex is wrong. So I have a question on a non-scientific note. <laughs> what is your thoughts on calibrating it to the tank water versus a calibration solution? It's not a problem. Yeah. Um, as long as you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. it's not a problem. Uh, in other words, you have to have some multiple validation sources for the, oh, here's my noise on my side. <laughs> Um, you have to have multiple validation sources on, you know, what is 35 PPT or whatever it is the tank water is that you want it to be mm -hmm. and call it 35 PPT yeah. if you want. Um, but, you know, where where you think normal is 
it, it is in the tank, but it'll you calibrate to the tank, it'll say it's 35 ppt, right? That, that's kind of um, what I did to compensate my little bit of interference. Not, I was throwing a problem. It off. Yeah. As long as oh gee, I've used a digital refractometer along with um you know, a visual refractometer, mm -hmm. you know, on the water and they're both were calibrated with the proper calibration solutions. And then they both came out close to each other. So I averaged those two together. And so the tank right now says it's 34.5 and I, I like 34.5. Mm -hmm. That's great. For me. Okay. So I'm going to calibrate my apex to 35. And when the apex is 35, I know it's really 34.5. Yeah. I mean, that's really something you absolutely can do. Okay. Yeah. I'm just kind of curious. Um, someone was asking, am I going to run UV? If so, how daily per needed? Um, I've never used UV in my life, so no plans on it. I did kind of look at them, but they're hundreds and hundreds of dollars and I didn't see enough of a big benefit in my scenario for it. If you are going to do UV, you kind of need to get a decent one. The cheaper ones I find a little more questionable and they're also very specific on how much flow goes through it. Too much flow and it's not going to do anything too slow too slow flow i mean you may just kill everything but if the contact time is really big with uv and you need to size it appropriately for your tank size to get the benefit out of it they can be useful to prevent some certain things like pathogens or stuff in the water i've never had a huge issue so i've never bothered on my tank personally so no plans of it maybe one day i'll try it but um i still do i haven't set up a new tank but i was using ozone still it's same thing, it will kill stuff in the water within my skimmer chamber, which will get it in there. I used it more for a water clarifier, kind of like a carbon than anything else. So I'll, I'll probably re-implement that at some point in the tank again. But yeah, no plans on UV at the current moment. Uh, I wish it read an SG. Yeah, I was just reading that one. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting comment all the time. I, and I really don't completely understand it. I'll, the little background there is we all look kind of at SG because that's what we did a long time ago um, because that's how we measured the tanks right we had a little mm -hmm. swing arm one or you know we used a, a floating hydrometer and that's why we we use sg in reality what scientists use and what is the most accurate way to look at salinity in your aquarium is not in sg because salinity is really the amount of salt as a percentage you know or mm -hmm. parts per thousand of the water right and so you really want to look at it in the PPT because it, 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 it gives you so much more benefit. Also, you, you know, in something like an apex, you just get much more granularity in the reading than you even can get in anything else that you read with the, the number of significant digits. So, mm -hmm. um, it's something you're just going to have to start to get used to because it's better for you. It's, you know, it's like your mom telling you eat your vegetables. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's definitely start getting used to going, you know what? Uh, 33 and a half PPT is a good spot to be in for my tank, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to put at 1.024, you know, to 25, you know, and, and 35 is going to put me at two six and that's where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fair point. I, I, a lot of people are starting to do the push more back to the 35 type scale around 1.026. Um, just cause well, I know, so I know it's really forward. Yeah. It's, this is, I mean, this is what scientists use. This is what's called practical salinity units or PSU. Mm -hmm. And it's because of it, the universality of it compared to specific gravity. Mm -hmm. Just to throw this out, because I know I'm going to get asked, both of these so far already tell you PPT or specific gravity. So they both tell you both. This one only tells you temperature in salinity or Celsius, though. And this one will tell you Celsius or Fahrenheit. So couple yeah. little differences so far. I would never even, you're talking about the little dip things, right? Yeah, the, the little two digital ones. Yeah. I, I would never use those and use them in specific gravity. It just doesn't make sense because you're, you're not measuring specific gravity. <laughs> yeah. You, you are not measuring specific gravity as not, it, it's, you are measuring salinity. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Br Brand was asking, is it possible to have success without a protein skimmer or just a bad idea? Mine's busted. You 100% do not need one. You can have perfectly success without it. On a small tank, I wouldn't bother using one because the water change will give you much more benefit than your little skimmer, dinky skimmer will. I've seen massive systems just use refugium and no protein skimmer and be perfectly fine. So no, you do not need one. On I, I would take, I would be a little contrarian on that okay 
I would say it, 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 even on larger systems, it depends a whole lot on what you're doing in that system. Mm. Uh, you know, what kind of corals you're running and what kind of fish you're having in the tank mm -hmm. uh, and what your feeding schedule is, and what the bio load is, because to be able to pull that out with algae, uh, you know, depending on if you've got a tank that requires you to have a lot cleaner water mm -hmm. and, and you run a lot of fish and you feed a lot in the tank, I would say you're going to do really well for a, for a while and then you're going to yeah. have a bad day. So a skimmer will reduce your need for water changes to nutrient export. So on, on a small system where you can do a five gallon water change and there's like half your tank or, you know, a quarter of it, whatever, I wouldn't bother. I wouldn't worry about it for the couple hundred bucks that they charge for the tiny ones. Not worth it bigger system it's going to reduce your need for maintenance so i think it's worth it but you do not need it but it's it's makes your life easier yeah if you want to yeah. run a if you want to run a softy tank that's 350 gallons mm -hmm. uh, you know with soft corals and zoanthids and you know mucids brain corals those kinds of things uh absolutely i, I would be 100 percent in agreement with you yeah uh, if you're going to want to run you know, what you see people like Devin have, um, and you're going to want to do it longer than a couple of years, then I would say you need to have a skimmer. Yeah. I, I would always personally run one. I see a lot of LG turf scrubber companies claiming that you can replace your skimmer. I'm still a bit skeptical and on the fence on that one. Yeah. I'd like to show, I'd like people to show me a whole bunch of tanks that they've done that on yeah. versus how many tanks I've seen skimmers on well, that are baller tanks. So mm -hmm. Yeah. The other big thing to consider is it's also aeration to your tank, right? It's going to help add oxygen back into your water. And at least with my tank, like back in the day, systems are crashing water down. You're getting all kinds of natural air turbulation and stuff, which is going to drive out CO2 and add oxygen. Where like my system, all my drop-offs are less than an inch. Like everything's super minimal to make my tank dead quiet, which is crappy for aeration. It's great for noise level, right? But the skimmer is probably the biggest thing that's going to help with gas exchange in my tank. I mean, the surface agitation does as well, but that's another big benefit. And if there's like a pH issue, you know, having your skimmer suck on a little outside airline can also make a huge difference on your pH and that oxygen exchange in your tank. So there's, there's lots of other benefits besides just it getting out that extra protein into the water. That's why you're the reef dude. <laughs> The reef dude, the reef dudes. There's two of me somewhere. Doo, doo, doo. Uh, okay, another question that came up: What's the best calibration fluid to use? Fifty-three thousand. You guys sell two different ones. That would be for you, Terrence. What was that question again? The best calibration flu fluid to use. Fifty-three thousand question mark. You guys sell two different ones. Yeah. Okay. So the 53,000 basically is setting you up for 35 PPT. The 447 one is for use on clean water. Hmm. For so, like ROD? Yeah, like ah, exactly. I did not know that. Good to know. Okay. Perfect. There you go. So 53,000 for tank water. I've never considered using one for RODI. Um, I would prefer refugium over LG turf scrubber. So that one I've been asked a fair amount, actually. If you have a very small sumper area, a turf scrubber will give you more bang for your buck in a small space. However, they also require more maintenance because you got to clean it every seven to 10 days, two weeks, whatever it is. So you have to physically go in there and scrape off all the algae. So they do a good job in a small package. But if you have a bigger area for just a refugium, I know, that's, I know that's what people say. Yeah. I don't know that it's been proven by anybody. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And I, on top of that, there is a very, like for those of us who care about energy consumption, either mm -hmm. for our pocketbooks or for the environment, yep. there's quite a big energy penalty um, that you pay for an algae scrubber, at least the ones I've seen. Even the LED ones use a pretty decent amount, and it's 24-7. Yeah. yeah. So, well, you'd have to feed it with a, a pump. So there's that energy. And then right. the lighting for a refugium or the turf scrubber could be a wash depending on the, the light. So yeah, it does consume more energy. It's more maintenance. I mean, well, it depends because yeah. I usually run my refugiums, uh, 
you know, reverse photosynthesis, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. RDP or whatever. And, you know, with the turf scrubber, they're generally on 24 seven. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be, but I guess it's generally on 24 seven. It's mm -hmm. one of the advantages uh, because of the time. Yeah. And I think they run about 80 to a hundred Watts. Mm -hmm. I want to say. Okay. So, so that is, you know, at least in a small tank, you can get away with half of that to do a refugium because it's sitting out more, it, at least what I've seen. Mm -hmm. So 80 watts, you know, and even if you had 20 watts for the pump, that's 100 watts. That's 2,400 watts. Uh, so you're, you're using two kilowatt hours plus a day. Mm -hmm. So that's costing you to run the algae scrubber about 20 bucks a month in California. Really? That's a good chunk. So most people don't realize this stuff adds up really quickly. Now, just just for like a comparison, like a Kessel H80, which is a one of the popular more intense lights. I think that's ninety watts. But then no, if you're... the three the the three sixty is. Oh, sorry, that's what I was thinking of. Kessel H three sixty. Yeah, the three sixty uses like eighty or ninety watts, and um, and that is probably overkill in the size small size sump that you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, that's fair. So. But then again, if you're only running reverse cycle, so much in an algae scrubber is because they're trying to accelerate that growth mm -hmm. too. And, uh, and it's not, I mean, it's not for everybody in their sump, but I've been very successful in the, you know, in a 25 gallon sump in a 210 that I've had, mm -hmm. uh, pulling out tons of Cato out of it. Yep. Um, you know, and there is an ease of use factor there too. So I, and I haven't seen where somebody says it works better and has actually proven it. Somehow or another. It would be interesting to see like two identical tanks side by side. I think yeah. we have threw it out to the, I think I've posted or someone, I've seen a couple people post on the BRS ones. Hopefully they do it for one of their random deep dives because I think it'd be interesting to find out. In th right. And somebody just wrote here, they don't run it 24 seven, they run it 16. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the Kessel 360 uses more power. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> you know, but I wouldn't be running the Kessel 360 in a small space either. Mm -hmm. I'd, be, I'd be running the, the, whatever the smaller version of it is h180 or and, 60 or something and so yeah the, maybe it does work better maybe it doesn't i don't know um but you know if you can make the claim i can make the counterclaim <laughs> so what so do you I heard rich told me that one day <laughs> what, him? yep what are you using on your what so what are you using to light your the 25 gallon sump if well, that do. was back then, and yep. when I ran it then, I ran a cheapo bulb from Home Depot, some cheapo, mm -hmm. uh, whatever it was, 80 watt, you know, horticulture bulb or whatever when yep. I was living in, in Utah. Um, now I have, uh, you know, about, what is it, 30 by 30? Yeah, I've got probably about almost, about six square feet of algae bed, and I <laughs> like huge. that with, uh, with two of the H380s. <laughs> that's huge six feet of algae nice yeah two foot by three foot yeah basically and um and it's about probably eight inches thick too and you know it's a it does cost me too i run it you know half a day and so that means you know i'm i'm running uh it's costing me uh about 15 dollars, almost 15 dollars a month mm -hmm. and actually it might be a good chat to do one on just the energy consumption of tanks too at some point yeah, I don't think people really pay attention to it or really understand or they don't really want to know. So you probably wouldn't have anybody listen because they'd, they'd like to. I do. Not be able to about that. I like it. <laughs> I have tweaked stuff based on looking at the power graphs from the outlet. So I did it on my UV. I was just like, oh, cool, UV. Awesome. I got this big old black UV unit that I'm running. And then I looked at the, the cost and it was like, oh, wow, that thing is costing me more than my Netflix. <laughs> so yep. maybe I need it that often it was like 30 bucks a month it was costing me or something to run Ooh, I'm that's like, up there it's a good so, chunk. yeah well when you pay over 30 cents a kilowatt hour in the third tier in california it adds up real quick Ooh, you have three tiers out there nasty well we have four tiers oh chat two here and i thought that was bad and we'll be time based also here pretty soon i think so mm. i have to that's the other thing too a lot of the countries in that and that's what's nice if i can plug the apex is that we've got that stuff all built in so you can look at it mm-hmm the you know across time when what you're using when and you can adjust it so if you're if you're if you want to run your uv and it costs you a lot more to run during the day then you run it at night and or, cheap times. You know, mm -hmm. yeah or whatever you know or gee i'm not going to run an rdp because you know uh, 
it's well it's usually less at night but anyway you get the point yeah exactly well this could be a good one to dig into this may be a future stream next month or something people don't realize how much it all costs it's yeah. it's it's ridiculous because it's it's not straightforward for a lot of people yeah. how it's even charged mm -hmm. how they're like being charged my old tank i worked it out to about 30 bucks a month it was cost me electricity yeah you were probably off by a factor or two <laughs> think so yeah we'll find out with the new one i'll work it out again Talk about the one that you just came off of, the one with the five. No, the... that one only had four. Well, I had one in the sump for my frags at night. Yes. But now there's yeah. five on top. So you have five hundred watt radions, right? But they're running at a fraction of that percentage, right? If they're like yeah. thirty something percent overall, my schedule's like fifty, sixty percent. So it's not actually drawing that. Actually here, I'll go no the apex isn't hooked up yet. All right. I'll tell you in a week or two. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, yeah, at the end of the day, if you're being honest and you're using also the right price out of your thing from the right, you know, tier that you're in, and then you look at your, your pump and you look at the actual utilization on your pump, which is 24-7 mm -hmm. you know, on that one, and you start adding all of that up, it it's, I mean, how much a kilowatt hour are you there? Uh, the second tier is about 15 cents. Yeah, exactly. So it, it adds up mm -hmm. really, really fast. Well... I got a, a second fancy power bar, so I'll be able to judge every outlet now, and I'll tell you exactly once I get it all wired up again. <laughs> so yeah. We'll find out soon. Yeah, you'll be curious. i have cur currently working on figuring out my control panel and how I'm wiring everything up and where it's all going and trying to hide the wires nicely and all that fun stuff, so that's a Can't good chunk. Can't wait to see it. Soon, 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 soon. Probably Kelsey Reactor tonight, and maybe that will be get the Apex and everything else wired up over the next few days. Lots, lots of work, but the build is half the fun to me. I love the, I love the build. Yeah, I hear you. I've, I've got to strip out and clean out the stuff downstairs in my place because it's a disaster already down there. <laughs> plugging stuff in and unplugging stuff. And... You, should, you should see my living room with two tanks and I had a table full of rock as I'm escaping it and two tanks half running. My old tank is drained and clean now. The sump is still like an all-in-one tank. I literally have the return pump feeding back to the filter sock just to keep my extra frags and so, rock so i didn't getting, use and... getting back onto the subject of moving tank. <laughs> yep so what did you have to do to bribe your significant other to even not only get the tank but to endure such a you know i cleaned i cleaned up the living room today so it's not completely blown up but yes it um the, the fact that it was temporary is pretty good i'm trying not to push it too far <laughs> um keeping the, the significant others happy is another very good point of this hobby yes it is very important I I, yeah. I sold my hippo tank. She wasn't happy with that because that was her favorite fish. Apparently, I learned afterwards. So, uh, yep, it was getting pretty big though. It was by far my biggest fish in the tank. So I sold it, and a buddy shut down his tank a month ago. So I bought his smaller version, which is living in my other buddy's tank. So I got to go retrieve that guy this week. Yeah, those those hippo tanks grow fast. I mm -hmm. my little guy I got two years ago, and uh, uh, he was about an inch and a half long, and he's now like six inches long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good chunk. Uh, let me know if you guys have any other questions on the actual topic. I think I covered at least the handful of questions I was asked in the past week or so. And I'm going to bust out, man. But good chatting with you as always. Sounds good. Thanks. For I think it's great for the hobby. And uh, I love hopping on from time to time. Yep. You know? Good to hear and, from you. You know, I like to do it. And, you know, the uh, come on and ask some questions on the chat sometimes on uh, Let's Talk Reef. Sounds good. I haven't okay. caught it live yet. I always catch it like an hour later, but yeah, I'll get okay. on there soon. All right. Thanks, Terrence. Bye. 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 All right, guys, let me know if there's any last questions. I think I covered them all in the tank excitement, which is a good chunk of my time lately. Tonight's to-do list is probably set up the Kelsen reactor. Um, I made a screen top today since my trigger jump last night. That sucked, but thankfully I was awake to actually retrieve him, threw him back in the tank. That was good. So I got um, the top on. So calcium reactor tonight. It's seventy percent new water, but I mean those corals are gonna deplete those minerals eventually. So I got to get my button gear and get that calcium reactor running. So hopefully do that tonight, and then my control panel wall will be the next big project. And once that's all pristine and stuff, I think it'll be good. A few other really cool automation ideas I have in mind. I was thinking I might do the apex. It's hundred percent do it from scratch, and then maybe I'll do a video on it as I set it all up. And just how I'm setting stuff up and how I'm doing it, which I think will be good. Uh, what's going on, Rogue? 
Uh, eight gallon soft coral tank fuel PS running an aqua clear 20. Would you run a Jabo 10? This is OW, I think it's something another different name, but 10. Um, it definitely doesn't hurt. Flow is always good for your tank. You could get away with just aqua clear for sure on an eight gallon. You don't need it, but it doesn't hurt to have it. Uh, so go back in. Thanks, Lisa. To tell you my net. If anyone from here is local, we are doing reef wings tonight at 7 p.m. at EK's Grail. So if any guys are in Okanagan, come out tonight. I think we had like 11 or 12 people last month when we did it, so it was kind of fun. So it should be pretty good. Unless we get two weeks. All right, boys and girls, I think I'll shut her down for today. I think I answered all the questions. Are you keeping your old EB-8 as a spare? I think so. Um, eventually what I was thinking, I, I debated selling it, but, um, eventually when the tank does move upstairs, I want to, I'm thinking I could just use that down there to automate my water changes and different stuff. So I'll probably keep that for that purpose. Cause I want to have, you know, do a gallon a day, automate the water changes. I can use that to like automate the mixing station or something. So I think there'll be some useful, so I'll probably hang on to it. Great stream. Thanks, Sandy. Much appreciated. Lisa, thanks as always for being a superstar. And Cruz, if you're still on, you're amazing. Thank you so much. All right, guys, I'm going to call her for tonight. If you guys are local, better come to Reef Wings. And any other questions, um, reefdudes.com slash ask. Have a question? Oh, other side. Um, so that's one. A lot of the stuff for streams and random videos actually come for just common questions. It decides what I'm going to do for my stream. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed it, a bit random today. But I had a number of questions, so it seemed fitting enjoyed it, smash that like button if you're new, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next stream. Cheers, guys.